Hello everybody, today I'm going to be attempting to repair a Nintendo GameCube WaveBird controller. So in front of me I have the two relevant controllers for this project. Uh, neither one of them are working at the moment, so I'm going to hope to take parts from this one, move it into this one, and have one functioning controller out of these two. So the problem with this one, and first of all, they're both missing a battery cover, so that's going to be happening. That's going to be something I have to resolve at the end of the video, and you'll see what I do for that. But the problem with this controller, which I have owned since, well, I've owned for many years, but it has stopped working because, as far as I know, the reason is the battery terminals are corroded. So you see, if I put batteries into this one, it won't even turn on. Give the batteries a little spin, because sometimes that helps. Doesn't really help much. So that's the problem with this one, as far as I know. The battery terminals are corroded and with this one which I actually bought off of eBay for quite cheap because it doesn't work if you put the batteries in this one you'll see that it will indeed turn on and you have a little power indicator light however it does not register any clicks and it does not connect to the GameCube receiver so seeing as this controller I really don't know what's wrong with it um, so I'm not going to try to repair this, I'm going to try to take the parts from this and move it to the other one. But with this one, I am fairly confident that I know what's wrong with it, which is corroded battery contacts. So this is the one I'm going to be attempting to repair. In addition, this one I know has been treated decently well for its whole life. I mean, I just left it in an air-conditioned room in a drawer, and the terminals got corroded. So I'm not really worried about water damage or controller abuse or anything like that. Whereas this one might have some more extensive damage because I don't really know where it came from. As I said, I just bought it online. So I'm not going to bother trying to repair this one. I'm going to take the terminals from this, which look quite clean. It's the main reason I bought this. Um, and try to move it over to the other one. So that's going to involve desoldering these contacts. Or at least two of them need to be desoldered. One of them needs to be pushed out. Do the same on the other controller. Swap the terminals and then resolder it into the other one. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that, make sure my uh, hot iron, or soldering iron rather, doesn't go to sleep. And let's get started. Uh, I'm going to be using a tri-wing screwdriver, as you might expect for many Nintendo products. And here we're going to start on the disassembly. Have it here. If you want to change the membranes or some of the buttons, uh, fronts, this is the part you need to modify. But for this particular repair, it's not necessary, so I'm just going to set it aside and not touch it. Now, this is going to be the main motherboard, which can simply be removed by pulling on it. It's pretty much just a press fit. And these two contacts here are what need to be desoldered. In addition, I need to remove this battery contact here, which should be quite simple. This one should be able to just pop out through this little hole in the back. So this is actually not coming out quite as easily as I expected. However, on this controller, the one that I intend on repairing, the contacts here are actually not as nearly as badly corroded as this one here. So I'm actually going to wait on this. And I'm just going to replace the top contacts and see if that does it. And if not, I'll come back to this point and make sure to pull that out. But for the moment, I'm going to leave it as is and see if I can get by without removing this because it's being a little stubborn and I don't want to break anything. So I'm going to take this assembly and set it aside as well. And basically what I need to do is desolder these two contacts here. Now they are soldered in directly to the motherboard at this point here and here. So first things first, I'm going to heat up that solder and try to absorb as much of it as possible with some desoldering braid. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And 
and I'm going to pull off this joystick just to get better access, and it's pretty much just a friction fit, so no biggie there. And you can see the first battery contact fell out all on its own, surprisingly easily. easily. Let's see if I can get the second one to do the same. And there we go, the second battery contact is out. So I'm actually pretty much done with the donor controller and I'm going to give it another quick shot at removing this battery contact. But again, if it, if it doesn't go easily, I'm just going to skip it and try to come back to it later if necessary. But if I can get it out, it would be nice. There we go. Required a little bit more force than I would have liked, but we got it done. So these are all the replacement parts that I salvaged from the donor controller. Now I'm going to reassemble or at least stack all the pieces together of the donor controller just so it's not one big mess. And we'll get going on the controller that needs to be repaired. So here is the controller that needs to be repaired and let's disassemble that now. Again, I'm just going to move these membranes over to the front half of the housing because they're just going to get in the way for this repair, and I'd rather have them not. Now I'm going to take this front half housing and set it aside as well. And this is what we're going to work on. So again, like before, it's a simple press fit, so just carefully but gently pull it out and I actually dislodged this uh, tuning wheel but that is also just a press fit so I'm just going to actually let me make sure that I have it the right way around yep and press that back into place so I'm gonna set this aside as well and here you can really start to see all this corrosion all over this battery terminal here and here. And that, if I had to guess, it is what is preventing this from working. So I'm going to desolder that and hopefully get them swapped out with the new ones, which I have right here. I'm going to set them aside just so they don't get damaged and begin desoldering these. And like before, I'm going to remove this joystick just so it's not in the way. You can remove the C-stick if you want as well, but I don't think that one's going to be too much of a difficulty. And back to the desoldering braid. So, We've got this terminal released, and just for a quick comparison, this is on the left the corroded terminal compared to on the right the terminal that I'm going to be replacing it with. You can see what a big difference that is. So I'm going to set the corroded terminal here, the new one back, and let's see if we can get the other one off. And there we go, the second terminal is off. And again, just to do a little comparison, left and right, left is the corroded terminal, right is the one in better condition that I'm gonna be replacing it with. And while I'm here, I'm going to take a Q-tip with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and just clean up the area because there is some corrosion on the plastic as well that was holding those battery contacts 
And if I can remove as much of that as possible while I'm already here, why not? And I will also remove the battery terminal that is press fitted into the rear half of the housing. And on the last one, this gave me a little bit of difficulty, so I'm hoping this one will go easier. Although considering it's corroded, I am not very hopeful that it will. Alright, there it is. All the corroded battery contacts have been removed. And just for comparison, let me wipe this counter top a little bit. Just for comparison, here are the corroded battery contacts. And right below them, I'm going to put the non-corroded ones that I'm going to be replacing them with. And you can see what a big difference. I mean, these ones are completely covered in this matte blue and green battery acid or whatever it is. And these look nice and shiny as they should. So that is basically, as far as I understand, what was wrong with this controller is this is the count battery contacts we were working with. So I'm going to set these aside. I might be able to soak these in vinegar or somehow get them to a better condition that one day in the future I can use them as well. But for the time being, I'm not even going to bother. So I'm going to start by taking the press fit battery contact and as the name applies, press fitting it back into the housing. That is pretty much installed. Just give it a little bit of a extra encouragement with a screwdriver just to make sure that it's seated all the way, which I believe it is now. And now to move on to resoldering these two contacts. So here is the board that they're going to go into. And I'm going to take this one at a time. And don't have to bear much. It appears to be connected, at least on one side, which is not the final attachment, but it's enough to hold it in place while I attach the second one, and then I'll get them more solidly attached. So the second terminal goes into place. Again, I'm going to tin the end of my soldering iron, and I'm actually going to clean it as well. And I'm trying to attach this terminal. That one went together quite easily. Back to the first one, add some more solder to the other side. Now the new terminals are attached, everything is looking good. I'm going to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and clean up all the extra flux and reassemble it and see if we have a working controller. Before I screw the whole thing together, I'm just going to do a quick test with just two screws and see if it even turns on. There we go, it turns on. So, as far as I know, the repair was a success. So, I'm going to put the rest of these screws in and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for the battery cover. I have a little bit of a surprise in plan for that. Now the final piece to make this project complete, obviously batteries, and again just showing that now whereas before this, ter bat this controller would not even indicate that it's on, is now turning on fine. And I'll test it after the video, after I stop recording just to make sure that it registers clicks out and everything as it should. Final piece is the battery cover, and here I have uh, 
cover that I actually 3D printed in gray plastic. Now, it's not perfectly the same as the original WaveBird, which I have here, a fully functioning one. It's not the same, but I'm not really a collector as much as I am a user. So, for me, this will work perfectly fine. And that's it. That is how to repair a GameCube WaveBird.